Mail Cot Antenna. If you also have a look in there as well, there is a thing, uh, uh, all instructions to build the double quad antenna. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So, in this video, I want to show you this the RS UV 3A radio from hobbypcb.com. Now, as you can see, this is not a conventional style radio. There is no display for starters. So looking around the RSUV3A, we can see a power port, a USB port, an on and off switch, and an SMA antenna connection. As we swing round to the other end, we find a DB9 serial style connector, three LEDs which show power, transmit and receive status, and there's also a 3.5mm jack which is used for a speaker microphone. The speaker microphone shown here does not come as standard, but it is an accessory you can purchase from Hobby PCB for around $15. And before we start talking about the specifications, let's take a look at the actual PCB. One thing I noticed immediately was that this board is extremely light. So having it mounted in the aluminium case is definitely best. In my opinion, the board looks to be extremely well laid out and the quality of build is on par with the previously seen RSHFIQ that I reviewed a few weeks ago. If you don't want to use the RSUV3A with the aluminium case, then the board has four mounting holes already made, which makes it easy to install and integrate into your radio projects. So you're probably wondering why would anyone want to purchase a board like this? Especially at the start of this video, I demonstrated it working as a normal transceiver, with a speaker microphone receiving a local station. Well, first, let's take a look at the technical specifications of this so you have an idea of what the RSUV3A is actually capable of. So first off, the RSUV3A covers three handbands. Well, if we're in the US, these bands are two meters, which is 144 to 148 megahertz, the 1.25 band or one and a quarter band, which is 220 to 225, and then the 70 centimeter band, which is 420 to 450 megahertz. Now, obviously the outer edge of those bands may differ in your country. Now, the TX power is 23 dBm plus or minus one dB, which equates to 200 milliwatts. There is, however, an add-on board, which will give you five watts output, but I'll talk a bit more about that later in the video. On the panel, you'll also find a power connection, which has a power input from three to 16 volts DC. However, this can also be run from just the USB power without the need for another power supply. Controlling the frequency, volume, squelch, and tone squelch settings can be changed using a free application available on the Hobby PCB website. Now, when the RSUV3A is plugged into your computer via the USB cable, a virtual COM port becomes available. The control software will automatically scan the available serial ports and connect itself to the RSUV3A. Now the S meter on the software is fully working and to change frequency, you just simply click on the frequency box and enter the frequency. You can set this as simplex operation or work split for use with repeaters. Now the command reference guide is fully available on the website, meaning you can create your own application to control the RSUV3A from virtually any device running an operating system. This includes embedded boards such as an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. The RSUV3A can also act as a CW beacon, either an FM beacon, sending CW or true CW. That's just one of many applications the RSUV3A could be used for. I've shown here are some further examples of how this could be used. And another example could be a packet radio station, maybe for APRS or even a packet mailbox. The DB9 connector on the front of the RSUV3A contains all of the necessary connections to integrate to third party devices, such as a TNC, as audio PTT core and power is exposed on this port. Now, if you were including the RSUV3A into your own project box, then there are sufficient connections on the main board itself, including direct connections to the onboard Arduino, an ICSP programming header, an FTDI serial header, and even a 26 megahertz clock signal, plus all of the other connections for receiving audio, microphone, and PTT lines. Now, if you think that the RSUV3A could fit into your project, then I'd recommend downloading the user manual. It's extremely well written and really full of useful information. 
If you don't understand how useful this device could be in ham radio, then go ahead, download the manual anyway and take a look. It probably triggers some ideas and that's all part of the fun and part of the hobby. Now the command reference manual, as mentioned earlier, covers all of the commands that the RSU V3 accepts. So if you're looking at making your own application, then using this will be of great benefit. Now I mentioned earlier about a 5 watt amplifier that is designed to work with the RS UV3A. Now the RS UVPA is available from the Hobby PCB website. According to the specifications, the amplifier works for all of the supported three handbands. Please note that the amplifier is not a standalone amp, but is more of a companion board that can install on top of the RS UV3A. Of course, if you do not want to purchase the add-on power amplifier, you can use your own. Unfortunately, I did not receive one of these amplifiers, so I'm unable to do any power testing at this time. So there we go guys, there's a brief overview of the Hobby PCB RS UV3A 3-band transceiver. Now if you own one of these already, then I would really be interested to learn how you're using it and what for. Also, if you don't own one, but you have some ideas of how this could be used in amateur radio, what projects could it be used for, then please also leave a comment down below and I'll look forward to reading them. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.